Now we have learned how to calculate the capacitance of the single conductor and the capacitance in the system of two conductors. And now we know the difference between ideal and real capacitor. And the next example will be the capacitance between two wires. There are two infinitely long wires, one with positive charge and the other with negative charge, and we need to calculate the capacitance between these wires. There is an analytical solution. We will run the simulation and compare the results we get in quick field with analytical solution. Here is my simulation problem. The problem type is electrostatics. The model class is plane parallel. And I set the model depth of 1 meter. I will calculate the capacitance per, per 1 meter of depth. Now let's take a look at the model. There are two conductors. Left conductor with unknown potential and the right conductor with unknown potential. I set electric charge on the right conductor here and electric charge, the negative charge on the left conductor. The conductors are surrounded by the air. And far away from my conductors, the field fades to zero. On the external boundary, I specify zero potential. Let's take a look at the simulation result. Here you can see the equipotential lines. I can adjust the picture. Now this is the electric field stress distribution. You can see that around the small radius the stress is much higher. I will build the contour and show you on XY plot. Now this is my contour from left conductor to the right conductor. And this is the XY plot, the electric field state distribution between conductors. Here is my left conductor with larger radius and here is my small conductor Now I need to, now I will calculate the capacitance. I know the charge value. Again, I will calculate the, the potential difference between two conductors. Now let's divide the charge by the potential difference. 1000 picocombs divided by potential difference, I will get 10.53 picofarads. Let's compare with the theorem.
You can see these are the same values. This example is a simple case of transmission line. Let's move to the more complicated example. Here you can see the three-phase transmission line. There are three conductors, A, B, C. These conductors are placed above the Earth surface. And I need to calculate the capacitance in this case. In fact, in complex system with multiple conductors, there are several capacitances. There are self-capacitance of each conductor, and there are mutual capacitance between conductors. The potential of each conductor depends on its charge and charges of all other conductors. So there are simple steps to calculate the self-capacitance of the conductor. I need to charge my single conductor and disconnect all other charges. Then I can measure the potential of the conductor and calculate self-capacitance. To calculate mutual capacitance, I will charge second conductor disconnect all other conductors and calculate the induced potential value on the first conductor. We have only three conductors, so this is a not tiresome task, but there are more complicated problems. For example, if we have three-phase transmission line of double wire conductors or if we have the multi-conductor signal line, then quite a large number of problems should be simulated to find each partial and mutual capacitance. To automate this task, we have capacitance matrix calculator in Quickfield. Let's start Quickfield and take a look at the problem. Now this is my simulation problem. The problem type is electrostatics. The model class is plane parallel. The model depth is 4 kilometers. This is the length of my transmission line. I have three conductors. A B, C, the ground surface with zero potential, and the air. Now I will start capacitance matrix calculator. It's a very simple tool, it's included in every quick field package. This is the capacitance matrix calculator. I should choose the conductor, conductors from the list. And then I just press the calculate button. Capacitance calculator adjusts the quick field problem, set the charge on conductor, only on one conductor, and measure the potentials of other conductors and again and again to get the full capacitance matrix. Here you can see it on the screen. These are self-capacitances and these are mutual capacitances between conductors. This way you can quickly calculate the capacitance matrix with quick field. 
the next example I would like to show is some way unusual. We will calculate the capacitance of the winding. Here you can see the winding on the screen. This is the axis of rotation. And I need to calculate the capacitance of the winding. At high frequency, the winding features not only the inductance and resistance, but also the capacitance. Let's take a closer look at the winding construction. We start winding here and add one turn after another and then we switch to the next layer and again continue winding one turn after another and the last turn is connected to the voltage source and the third turn is connected to the ground If we know the voltage applied and if we know the number of turns, then we can find the voltage distribution along the winding. For example, we applied 10 volts and I have 10 conductors. So my first conductor has 10 volts potential, the second 9, then 8, 7, 6, and so on till we get to the zero potential conductor. And let's remember the another alternative approach to calculate the capacitance. We can calculate the capacitance through the energy. So if I know number of conductors and if I know the potential distribution along the conductors, I can simulate this case and calculate the electric field energy stored by this winding and find the capacitance. I will start quick field. I'll show you how to simulate this task. Now this is my winding problem. Again the problem type is electrostatics. The model class is axisymmetric. We have the axis of rotation here is a horizontal one. Let's take a look at the model. This is the air core coil. So this is the air and around the coil we have air. With electric permittivity of 1. These turns are labeled as first layer of the coil. And these turns are labeled as the second layer of the coil. I have to specify the voltage distribution. I can do it manually and set 10 volts here, 9 here, 8, 7, but quick field allows to specify the voltage distribution as a function of coordinates. So I simply enter the function to get the voltage distribution. Now let's take a look at the simulation result. I have voltage applied at my winding. I can run the simulation.
Here you can see the field lines. I will adjust the field picture. You can see the equipotential lines and the electric field strength distribution. Let's build the contour along the winding and take a look at the voltage distribution. Here you can see the steps. This is my term connected to the voltage source, then next term, next, and these you can see steps of voltage drop. And the last term is connected to the ground. So I have 10 volts applied to my winding. What is the field energy? You can easily calculate it with quick field. I select the air. and calculate stored energy integral value. I know the potential difference, I know the stored energy, and now I can calculate the capacitance. Two multiplied by multiplied by 2 divided by square voltage. Now this is the capacitance of my winding. 